Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 3. Last we left off, uh, we were in the middle of, um, well, taking back the Normandy. Shall we do it? Yeah, about that. Enjoy that, by the way. What kind of cover are you doing right now, Shepard? That fucking sucks. You kind of are a cannon fodder, by the way. One of my favorite. The CIC of a warship? Right. Okay, bump the guard, blow the electronic shot. And antique shot. As I recall. But only if they're planned. <laughs> Yeah, you're kind of dead, aren't you? Yeah, I'm sorry. Having a hard day? Oh, well, I guess you're just gonna have to go boom. It is strange moving through the Normandy without sensory access or control. I feel blind. If you're blind, then an eye for an eye is completely fair. I agree. Thank you. Let's get to the cargo bay. Merc PDA. Primary weapon, flexible accounts. All right, snipers. Management heard LRS Bell's complaints about having to go to with a standardized loadout instead of customizing your gear. So here's the deal. You can either take a standardized loadout or apply for a flex account that gives you an annual stipend to apply towards new weapons, upgrades, and maintenance. Your call, but anyone who goes crazy with mods and blows their own foot off with a high expensive ammo is shit out of luck, like RLS Bear Bell. Well, credits in your flex account expire at the end of the year, fiscal, not calendar. Also, as LRS Bell is no longer fit for service, you will be passing the hat for anybody who wants to chip in for a you shot your foot off card so we can send Susan off to retirement with a smile. Private Campbell's favorite mug? Oh. Well, yeah. All right. What did they do to my ship? My baby! This is my baby! They uprooted need everything! How could they? Let's see... What else is there? Is that my hamster?! Please send this to an animal shelter for proper disposal as a warship is not an appropriate- Oh, that is not okay. It is not! She messed with my hamster, guys. Now it's personal. Guys, were you gonna say something or... No, no, I get it. Hard to even find the words. Motherfucker messed with my hamster! Should we check on my fish? Because if she's getting rid of all the pets... I mean... We should probably deal with her first, huh? <sighs> all right. Sit tight, little guy. Anybody gives you trouble, go for the eyes. <laughs> All right. Sit tight, little guy. Anybody gives you trouble, go for the eyes. Damn. She fucked with my hamster, guys. I am not okay with this. All right. These people are showing disrespect to my home, my body. It is unacceptable. You want to talk about it? I intend to kill Shepard's clone, Agent Brooks, and anyone else in my way. Fair enough. Do you? I can agree with that. You know what? Just because I didn't get the chance to save last time? <laughs> yeah, just in case. All right. You're putting me on the wrong weapon again. It's not the right weapon. It's a cutscene, I know, but... You! That is not your armor! Well, that's creepy. Yeah, a little bit. Is this gonna be a shadow fight? You stop shooting up my ship? Your ship! It's not your ship. It will be. I've taken your name, your Spectre rank, even your fingerprints. Mm-hmm. 
And then you left me to die. Only I didn't. You think fake fingerprints are gonna fool the council? Or hack it? Mm-hmm. How's that big plan looking now? Yeah? You gonna fucking try that shit with me? Hatchet squad to the shuffle deck. Oh, shit. Alright, this is a fun little fight. So not only do I have... <sighs> my own shadow nemesis to deal with, but we've got Brooks. Brooks is actually kind of the support in this one. And, uh, it's good to kind of get rid of her, because I believe she does a lot of the healing, actually. For, well both of them. So. I'm gonna be in your fucking face, you traitorous son of a bitch. Excellent. Oh, and of course we got the mooks. Shit. Let's see. Who else have I got to... So they're mostly over that way. Oh, hey, you. you. Okay. I'm occupied in the shuttle bay. Roger that, Commander. We'll proceed with Plan B. Plan B. Is she already down? Dang. Plan B. Why are you throwing grenades, bitch? Oh, are you teleporting on me? You are actually fighting someone who has all of your capabilities. But, one, I'm playing on casual mode, and... Oh, hi. Uh... Yeah, you're dead. Aren't you dead? Oh no, you are. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, what's going on? Oh. So this is what the Citadel looks like up close. Oh, what's going on? Steve! Steve and Joker! Both pilots! Yeah, how's your plan looking? Get us out of the nebula and jump to FTL. We can't. A sky car keeps blocking our path. <laughs> and shoot it. <laughs> Don't get shot, guys. Need to stay within 30 degrees of the nose to block course plotting. That makes us a perfect target. No, that makes us the bait. Do you want me to drive? No. <laughs> Please don't get hurt, guys. Do not get yourself hurt, guys. Damn it. Launch the shuttle and blow that thing out of the sky. No. Wait, do you know where you are? Shit. Guys? Guys, no. The door is left unsecured, huh? Careful. The door is still unsecured. Well. You wanna fucking pretend like you can go toe to toe with me, bitch? Oh. Well, demonstrating some of that ability. And that would almost hurt. I'm just gonna fucking pistol whip you, bitch. Whoops. For some reason. Oh. 
You look like you're having a hard time. <laughs> Come on. You don't stand a chance with me. Whoa, whoa. Uh, careful, shepherds. I mean, shepherd and clone. Oh. Damn, I think I'm mad. Come on. Oh, whoa. Oh shit, oh shit. Uh. Uh. What makes you so damn special? Why you and not me? Hang on! Because. I have them. And Maya would not. Maya Brooks would not. <laughs> Thanks. Come on. And the clone? Why would we just kill the clone? Come on. Even if she causes us trouble, is that not exactly the whole point we've been making the entire time? Here, take my hand. And then... And then you live. For what? No! You didn't have to do that. That was completely unnecessary. We could have worked together. There could have been a better they chance. they weren't here long enough to do much real damage. Although I may need some help from James cleaning up the damage to the shuttle bay. Sorry. Plus they overloaded the heat diffusion system firing at us. I'm glad you guys are okay. Not sure if you noticed, but shuttle guy here did some crazy stunt flying to keep us in one piece. That's what he does. That's nice to fly something a little more maneuverable than the Kodiak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about you, Edie? I am once again in control of the Normandy. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear it. What about the Mercs? Any survivors? Just one crappy ass pilot and her. Alliance has taken her to a high security facility. Maybe she can give them some dirt on Cerberus. Mm hmm. I'll be more than happy to cooperate with the authorities. Yeah, don't make me kill you, and I want to kill you. Maya. I know that voice. Do you really? You're getting a chance to redeem yourself. Don't waste it. So, serious. Admit it. Some part of you liked having me around. Looking up to the legend? Hmm. We had some laughs. And who knows? Maybe we'll have more someday. No, we won't. Because you're gonna stay in your cell and do your time. Braid, I'll escape. Come back for revenge. Is the great Commander Shepard pleading for her life? No. I'm pleading, I'm pleading for, you. for yours. Oh. Yeah, you're trying so to... So thoughtful. <sighs> then I suppose I'm off to lock up. Mm-hmm. Is that what you think? You know, she wouldn't have let me live. No. You can't clone everything. And that's the point. I'm sorry we didn't shoot her. Yeah, me a little bit too, but... <sighs> there are certain things that you just don't do. One of those things is that if you ever have the chance to show mercy, then you do. And if you... I mean, I know a lot of people will disagree with me. That, uh... You don't always show mercy. Waiting outside. We'll have the Normandy back in shape in no time. Good. I guess she's gonna have to have some more repairs done now, huh? Hmm. Appreciate it. But yes, this this is, is what separates. Always like this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, maybe we can take some actual time off. No explosions or anything, just us. That would I'll be nice. I'll believe it when I see it, but it's worth a shot. Ah, gosh. Well, yeah. You can't clone everything. And I really do believe that it's Shepard's connections to her companions, her squad mates, that honestly make the difference. So oh. after a hard day spent fighting an evil clone, you know what comes next. Sleep. 
A nap? <laughs> Please. We party down. Well, I gotta get going. Things to settle up before I head back to Tuchanka. Always fires to put out when you're in charge, right? Yeah, I know how that feels. Let me know if you want to hang out or if you're having that party. Definitely. See ya. Party, huh? Well, no pressure. No one's gonna make you throw a party. Hmm. I'll think about it. I need to unwind. Check out the strip. I'll think on it. Just in case, please allow me to provide you with credits for the purchase of any party supplies, Commander. Sweet. Okay, Edie and Cortez and Trainer are in. What? What? I have also informed Dr. Tazzoni about any potential upcoming well, Wait a minute, I didn't agree to it yet. Wait, wait, I am in charge of the guest list. Yeah, so there's no uninvite button on this thing? <laughs> All right, but if and when I decide to have a party, I invite the rest. <laughs> Cortez just invited James. So... Of course he did. Right. No promises. Mm -mm. I'm gonna go out and see how much trouble I can get into without snapping a femur. Good luck Members with that. Members of your crew have expressed interest in spending time with you, Commander. You can check your private terminal for messages. <laughs> If you require activities, Silver Sun Strip has an arcade in addition to the casino. Hmm. You have also been granted a complimentary pass to the combat simulator. Ooh, that sounds cool. Thanks, Glyph. Guess I should take advantage of some shore leave myself. So in case you thought that this was all over... No, that was just the end of the first part of this DLC. We have... So much left to do. And a lot of it is based around being able to hang out with and chill with your companions. That is uh, what this is now. <sighs> right, I'm dressed pretty much exactly the way that I want to. Hmm. Let's see, anything new that I need to discover around here? No? Alright. I was told... That there should be a message somewhere on a screen. Oh, yes, I remember now. I don't think it's over here, though. But it's been a while since I've actually played through this. But I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the, uh, <laughs> the first part of the Citadel DLC. Hmm. Now, I could have sworn... Well, anyway. I'm, like, hunting around trying to find something that I have no idea if I'm even going to be able to find it. Oh, uh, gosh. I think I remember it, though. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sure that someone has actually told... Like, someone knows exactly where this is, and they're probably screaming at me right now. But that's the one. So I think I'll close out this episode with this one. There we go. Admiral David Anderson. He was kind enough to answer my questions and talk about his career. Today, yes, that's the Admiral angle I want. Is on Earth, leading the defense of our home against the Reapers. Ooh. We have no communication with him or any soldiers on Earth, but we can't forget what they're doing for us. Well, thank Tonight's you, Kalisa. Show is dedicated to all of the soldiers out there fighting and dying to keep us safe. Admiral Anderson, today marks the 30th anniversary of the N7 program. Mm. Can you describe your first day of training in this now famous program? The Interplanetary Combatives Training Program is all business from day one. How so? We're given basic gear, then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no nav data. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. Jeez. That sounds daunting. What happens to the ones who run out of air first? Out of the program. The best N7s can survive alone, but work together to survive even longer. Hmm. That's very impressive, Admiral. Yeah. Deep space survival training. Oh, that has to be so difficult. All of it would take such strength of character. Well, just plain strength. 
Yeah. But then you seem like a strong person. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is there a question in there? <laughs> well, does the program make the man? Or do you think you were born for this? Probably a little bit of both. It's a bit of both, I suppose. <laughs> Every soldier reaches a point in their career, sometimes more than once, when they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could. Mm -hmm. That moment is the test. I've seen men and women almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others, with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. Mm -hmm. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few. None of which I'd like to share. But... I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's mm. intuition? Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean, do you follow your heart over your mind? <sighs> well, <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. Good. The problem is... War isn't orderly. And the enemy is never predictable. It's true. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances. And there's more than I'd like to admit. Your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That and the save and reload button. And the men and women you're fighting beside. Mm, that's true. But soldiers are only as good as their leader. Isn't that true? Yes and yeah. no. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader... Well... War tends to make examples of them. Mm, that's true, too. A good, leader, then? Mm. a good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission, but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission is higher than the cost of losing those men. This is a very long interview. A terrible line to have to walk. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> is a terrible thing. Thank you for your time, Admiral. Thank you. The remainder of this interview was to take a more personal look at Admiral Anderson's life. It wasn't finished when the Reapers invaded. Mm. We can only hope that the Admiral and the soldiers under his command survive to tell us the rest of their stories. I'm Kalisa Algelani. Thank you for watching. So that was worth seeing. I did not actually mean to call some of his lines there. That was a little unexpected for me, but uh, that was definitely well worth it. And a little bit of a reprieve after all of the excitement of this last mission. But yes, I hope you guys are prepared for the fun, fun, fun part of the DLC. I sure am. <laughs> I hope to see you on the next installment of Let's Play Mass Effect 3.